Good evening. Welcome to the special meeting of the Liquor Control Commission for September 22nd. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner here. Here. Commissioner Brady. Here. Commissioner Kruger. Present. Commissioner Hine. Here. Commissioner Vogel. Here. Commissioner Lang. Here. Chairperson Argeris. Here. Thank you. Entertain a motion to approve the special meeting of August 4th, 2014 minutes. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Lang. Second by Commissioner Hine. Roll call. Commissioner here. Yes. Commissioner Brady. Yes. Commissioner Kruger. Yes. Commissioner Hine. Yes. Commissioner Vogel. Yes. Commissioner Lang. Yes. Prisoner Juris. Yes, thank you. 5A. Hearing in the matter of Party Fantasy Incorporated, 7150 Capitol Drive, Wheeling, Illinois. Docket number 14-01. Forfeiture due to cessation of business. Thank you. Manager Fundels. Thank you. As the title implies, this is simply forfeiture of a license for a business that is no longer in business. Okay. Questions from the board? Entertain a motion? So moved. So moved. Second. First by Trustee Lang, second by Trustee Hare. Roll call. Commissioner Hare? Yes. Commissioner Brady? Yes. I'm sorry. Commissioner. Commissioner Kruger? Yes. Commissioner Hine? Yes. Commissioner Vogel? Yes. Commissioner Lang? Yes. Chairperson or jurist? Yes, thank you. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Move. Motion by Commissioner Brady, second by Commissioner Hare. Roll call. Commissioner Hare? Yes. Commissioner Brady? Yes. Commissioner Kruger? Yes. Commissioner Hine? Yes. Commissioner Vogel? Yes. Commissioner Lang? Yes. Chairperson or jurist? Yes, thank you. Now call to order the special meeting for September 22nd, 2014. Roll call. Okay. Trustee here? Here. Trustee Brady? Here. Trustee Kruger? Present. Trustee Hine? Here. Trustee Vogel? Here. Trustee Lang? Here. President or jurist? Here, thank you. Entertain a motion to approve the regular meeting of August 18, 2014. So moved. Second. Motion by Trustee Kruger, second by Trustee Vogel. Roll call. Trustee here? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. President Argeris? Yes, thank you. Entertain a motion for the special meeting of August 25, 2014. Minutes. So moved. Motion by Trustee Lang? Second. So, second by Trustee Kruger. Roll call, please. Trustee here? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. President Argeris? Yes, thank you. Changes the agenda, Manager Svendels? Uh, I'd like to remove item 13G, please. Okay. Motion. Need a motion for that? Yes. yes. Entertain a motion? So moved. Second. second. Motion by Trustee here, second by Trustee Vogel. Roll call. Trustee here? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. President Argeris? Yes, thank you. Item 6. Proclamation, Madam Clerk. Domestic Violence, uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month, October 2014. Violence against women and children continues to be a prevailing problem in the northwest suburbs. The problem of domestic violence affects all Illinois citizens, being not confined to any group of people, but crossing all economic, gender, racial, and social barriers exasperated by Societal indifference. The crime of domestic violence violates the privacy, dignity, security, and humanity of individuals through systematic physical, emotional, sex, sexual, psychological, and economic control and or abuse. The impact of domestic violence is wide-ranging, directly affecting families, children, and society as a whole. Domestic violence affects one in four families and imposes a consequential cost on society and businesses, resulting in health care related expenses of $4 billion and nearly $700, 700 million in annual lost wages, sick times, and reduced productivity. Local educational information and resources are available at www.endalabuse.org. It is fitting to set aside a special time to bring this issue to the attention of the residents of the village of Wheeling so we can all become better informed and involved in local programs to end the cycle of violence. Dean Argeris, President of the Village of Wheeling, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2014 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month in the Village of Wheeling and encourage our residents to join 
with the Northwest Suburban Alliance on Domestic Violence, law enforcement, social service organizations, and concerned citizens across the country to help raise the public awareness of domestic violence issues. Thank you. Diane, love you. Fire Prevention Week, October 5th through the 11th, 2014. The Village of Wheeling is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living in and visiting our village. Fire is a serious public safety concern, both locally and nationally, and homes are the locations where people are at greatest risk from fire. Home fires killed more than 2,300 people in the United States in 2012, and fire departments in the United States responded to more than 365,000 home fires. Working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying and reported home fires in half. Three out of five home fire deaths result from fires in properties without working smoke alarms. In an estimated one-fifth of all homes with smoke alarms, none are working. When smoke alarms should have operated but did not do so, it was usually because batteries were missing, disconnected, or dead. Wheeling residents should install smoke alarms in every sleeping room outside each separate sleeping area and on every level of the home. Wheeling residents should install smoke alarms and alert devices that meet the needs of people who are deaf or hard of hearing. Wheeling residents who have planned and practiced a home fire escape plan are more prepared and will therefore be more likely to survive a fire. Wheeling's first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education. Wheeling residents are responsive to public education measures and are able to take personal steps to increase their safety from fire, especially in their homes. The 2014 Fire Prevention Week theme, Working Smoke Alarms Save Lives, Test Yours Every Month, effectively serves to remind us that we need working smoke alarms to give us the time to get out safely. Dean Argeris, President of the Village of Wheeling, to hereby proclaim October 5th through the 11th, 2014, as Fire Prevention Week, and I urge all residents to test their smoke alarms at least every month by pushing the test button and to support the many public safety activities and efforts of Wheeling's Fire and Emergency Services. Thanks, Chief. Thank you very much. I want to maybe say a couple words just to remind people if they have any questions, maybe they contact the department. I know the winter's coming, carbon monoxide poisoning is another. Uh, as the president pointed out, it's good for everybody to check your smoke detectors. One of the items not contained in the resolution I'd like to point out is if you have a smoke detector in your home, they last about 10 years. They're the hardest working appliance in your home because they work 24 hours a day, seven, um, seven days a week. So if your smoke detectors are 10 years old or you don't know, remember how old they are, now's a good time to replace them. Thank you. Administration of Oats, Police Officer Michael Munoz. Okay. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I'm Michael Munoz. I'm Michael Munoz. Having been appointed to the position of police officer. Having been appointed to the position of police officer. In the police department of the village of Wheeling. In the police department in the village of Wheeling. In the counties of Cook and Lake. In the counties of Cook and Lake. To solemnly swear. To solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will faith, faithfully discharge the duties. Of a police officer. A police officer. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Before I present uh, Officer Munoz with his, his badge, I would again like to take a moment to publicly acknowledge and thank uh, the members of the Board of Police and Fire Commission. We're fortunate to have three of them here with us tonight. We have the Chair, Lou Kolsak. We have two of our uh, commissioners, Mike Moran and Al Palicki. Not with us tonight are Al Hemd and Mike Murphy. But again, uh, I can't thank you guys enough for the countless hours you put in, the dedication to our police department, our fire department, and the community in general. Um, it is my honor at this time to present uh, Michael Munoz with star number 104. 
Um, Michael will be starting the academy a week from today. He will be going through a 12-week um, academy course at the Suburban Law Enforcement Academy in Glen Ellen at the College of DuPage. After that, he'll go through a rigorous 14 to 16 week field training program, and then uh, he will be with us protecting the community. Uh, at this time, it is my honor, star 104. There you go. And if you'd like to take a moment, tell us a little bit about yourself, introduce, introduce yourself to the board and, and the audience, and then introduce uh, family and friends. Hello everyone, my name is Michael Munoz. I'm from Melwood Park, Illinois, a recent college graduate from Western Illinois University. Uh, I previously worked at the Park Ridge Police Department part-time, so I'm actually very excited to start my career here. And uh, I'm very honored and very privileged uh, to work here in Wheeling. Uh, here today is my father, Luis Munoz, my brother, John Munoz, his wife, Jessica Munoz, uh, my niece, uh, Jacqueline Munoz, and my mom, uh, Blanca Munoz. Michael, welcome to the family. We wish you the best of luck at the Academy. Entertain a motion to take a 10-minute recess to have a little cake and some refreshments so we can meet everybody. So, so moved. moved. Motion by Trustee Hare, second by Trustee Kruger. Roll call. Trustee Hare? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. President Argyris? Yes, thank you. Whoa. 10 minutes. We'll be back about 10 minutes, too. Thanks.
Entertain a motion to reconvene into open so section. I'm sorry, who was it from? Trustee who? Here. Here. Second. Second by Trustee Vogel. Roll call. Trustee here. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Kruger. Yes. Trustee Hine. Yep. Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Lang. Yes. President Argeris. Yes, thank you. Uh, citizens' concerns and comments? Members of the general public may address the board with concerns or comments regarding relevant issues. The person submitting a petition, concern, or other comments shall be allotted five minutes to present their points and should state their name and address into the record. Sorry. Mrs. Schultz? That's what I get. Good evening, I am Sheila Schultz. I live at 393 South Meadowbrook Lane, Wheeling, Illinois. Um, Mr. President and Board of Trustees, I have a few questions uh, t uh, today that uh, really center around stormwater management issues. And my first question is uh, regarding the Northgate Crossing subdivision that you're going to address tonight. I wonder, did the storage retention requirement area, did that meet the 1.5 criteria that we have in our village code? Mr. Janik, you want to answer this? Yes, it did, because it is the code as of today. Okay, the 1.5. That's correct. Thank you. That's, that's very, very good. Would they, will they be granted, uh, if you know this at this point, a portion of the village's quota from the Heritage Park storage? I believe that part of the redevelopment agreement states that they are going to get some relief that, regarding That they will be. Thank you very much for that. <clears throat> uh, in the executive summary, it, it points out that one of the requirements for continuing participation in the program is an annual recertification that the village is still implementing the programs and activities for which it receives credit. And, and you will be addressing that this evening also. Um, and to remain in the program, and in that program, is, as you know, uh, does, uh, with the proper rating, it does currently give a 20% discount to those of us in the uh, stormwater hazard area. And uh, the current rating is six, and that's what it will remain with this certification. That uh, it requires the, um, the village through their village manager uh, to confirm the validity of the village's rating. And that rating uh, depends on following the uh, conditions that gained us that rating in the first place. Uh, the on-site review was conducted in 2011. And uh, I wonder if FEMA is aware, or those doing that criteria, doing that uh, rating system review, uh, are aware of the fact that the village has at least on one occasion granted a variation to our own requirements for stormwater. You Thank you. Sure. Uh, Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, the answer is yes, and we took it one step further to see if there was an impact to following only the 1.1 to 1 regulation, if that would have a negative impact on our rating, and the answer was no. That it would not affect the rating at all? Correct. And to the Mark, contrary, if I can add to that, if I may add to that, our class rating of six just happened. We used to be a seven. The residents used to get a 15% discount, now they get a 20. So based on what you're saying, they've gone through all this stuff, and our actually classification got better for the community. So you know. <laughs> okay, I, I, was, I was told uh, recently not to worry about the six, because in fact we were going to be improved to an eight. No, it was a seven before, if I'm not correct. Seven is 15. If it goes to eight, it's getting worse. The lower you go, the better it becomes when it comes to flood insurance. I sell it. I know. Mm -hmm. Thank so, you. I appreciate sure. your uh, comment, and I appreciate you giving me the answers okay. directly. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Next. Ms. Scott.
President Argeris, Village Trustees, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Sherry Scott, 277 Fletcher Drive, Wheeling. I would like to give special recognition to the Wheeling Police Department and Citizens Patrol members, George Musiani and Ricky Lewandowski, for their involvement in the successful apprehension of three perpetrators committing vehicular burglary. The citizens work hand in hand by promptly calling the police, giving detailed descriptions that led to the arrest of three criminals and retrieval of stolen goods. The Bling Police Department officers involved, Mr. Lewandowski and Mr. Mr. Musianti, should be commended for their actions. It is people like them who help in keeping our community a safe and peaceful place to live. I would also like to give special mention to officers Duran Swanson and Scott Lavard for their efforts with the Wheeling Citizens Police Academy and Citizens Patrol Program that not only keeps our community informed, but also trains the citizens on what to do in such circumstances. And for that, I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? No, that's all, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. Staff reports, Community Development Director Mark Janik. Thank you. I just want to give a quick update on some of our construction projects. I'm happy to say that uh, we successfully installed the uh, storm sewer pipe along uh, A Street and uh, Mayor Avenue easement recently. Uh, today and or this week, they're going to be sodding the uh, the exposed easement, but all the, uh, the storm sewer pipe and the patching in the streets has all been uh, accomplished. Uh, the Moores Avenue area, that includes uh, the south part of Wheeling and Willie Roads, uh, all received a binder course uh, late last week, finally. Uh, the, uh, the weather has, uh, has held up recently. Um, we're hoping to get uh, the final course on that roadway. Um, we were hoping for it this week, but it most likely will take place next week. Um, the water main project on, in Hollywood Ridge on the south uh, side of Dundee Road is going well. Uh, we have been able to uh, install all the pipe and it's being chlorinated as of today. And they're gonna start doing the services uh, this week, late this week, the project is on budget. And um, the only other project to uh, really talk about it is the uh, Meadow Lane project. Um, that not much has been accomplished there recently. It has been wet up there, and the contractor will be start working up there this week again. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Human Service Director Sherry Weezer. Good evening. Thank you, President Argeris. I would like like to take this opportunity to invite Wheeling seniors who receive Medicare and Medicaid to an informa informational meeting on October 6th at 10 a.m. There have been some changes to the program in the state of Illinois and many residents who receive Medicare and Medicaid have received letters. We'd like um, these residents to come in at 10 a.m. on October 6th. Representatives from Catholic Charities will be there to explain the changes that are happening in the system and to answer any questions. If you have any questions, please contact us at 847-459-2670. Thanks. Thanks, Sherry. Economic Development Director, John Melanthi. Thank you, President Argeris. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, announce and uh, let the residents know about the Wheeling Prospect Heights Chamber of Commerce Taste of the Town event uh, hosted by the Restaurant Row Hospitality Group, the Chamber, um, the Village of Wheeling. It will uh, take place Thursday, October 9th from 5 to 8 p.m. at the Western Chicago North Shore at 601 North Milwaukee Avenue. Last year, over 600 patrons uh, enjoyed a great evening um, and sampled food from over 20 restaurants, wineries, and breweries, um, including uh, Tuscany, Serenello's, Benihana, Pete Miller Steakhouse, Bob Chin's, Buca de Peppo, Cooper's Hawk, and many, many others. Um, the theme of the event is Celebrate a Healthy Harvest. And uh, if you would like more information, um, it's located on the Wheeling Prospect Heights Chamber at wphchamber.com. There's also information on the Village website. And their telephone number is 847-541-0170. I hope you can join us for a great evening. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Jen. You're welcome. Consent agenda. 
All items listed on the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the village board and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a board member or citizen so requests, in which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered after all other agenda items. Any concerns, questions? So moved. Motion by yes. Trustee Second. Wang. Second by Trustee Kruger. Roll call, please. Trustee here? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Hine? <clears throat> Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. President Argeris? Yes, thank you. 13A, Madam Clerk. Uh, presentation regarding volunteer snow removal program. Thank you. Director Wieser. Come on up. Application. <laughs> Good evening. I'm here this evening to present for you information regarding a new initiative the village. Senior Citizens Commission and the Human Services Department have put together. Every year, the Senior Center receives calls from older residents looking for resources to help them with the removal of snow from their driveways and paths to their, to their home in the winter. I know it's hard to believe we have to start thinking about this, but it is October, or almost. Some of them are looking for local businesses um, to call, and others are looking for assistance due to the many issues they may be facing. The new proposed snow, volunteer snow removal program is designed to help the latter group. Those elderly and disabled residents with limited means and few, if any, family members in the area. Volunteers from the community will be assigned to senior and disabled residents of the village who are in need of help clearing their driveway and sidewalk after th three inches of snow. Volunteers will not be compensated by the, by the village or the senior and must provide their own supplies, including shovels, gloves, boots, etc. The senior disabled resident must meet income criteria and have no other option for snow removal, such as family or friends. The Human Services Department has consulted with legal counsel regarding the liability issues of this program and waivers and releases have been prepared to protect all parties involved. Volunteers will be recruited, screened, and assigned by the members of the Senior Citizen Commission. We hope to advertise in the village newsletter, church bulletins, village website, and many other locations throughout town. Members of the Senior Commission will also recruit the participation of local service groups by attending their meetings and discussing the program needs and benefits to volunteering. Applications for volunteers will be available on the Village website and at the Senior Center. The program provides a great opportunity for interested residents to help neighbors and the community. Senior disabled participants will be recruited in similar ways, such as the Village and Senior Center newsletters, Village website, etc. When senior um, residents apply, the Human Service Department will contact the applicant and arrange for a home visit by a social worker to determine qualification for the program. The benefits of the home visit include an on-site determination of appropriateness for the program regarding the size of the property, a chance for residents who may not be familiar with programs serving older adults to receive information, as the income qualifications may also qualify them for other state and federal programs, and also a chance to assess for other services provided by the Human Services Department. Accepted participants will be notified when a volunteer has been assigned to them and also explain that there's no guarantee they will be assigned a volunteer as this will depend on the availability of the volunteers. Participants will have, the, have to apply every year and the home visits will be determined on a case by case basis. The Senior Commission would like to implement this program this coming winter. So I'd like to open this up for questions or comments. Thank you, Sherry. Trustee Vogel. I think it's a great idea, but when I went through this and I looked at the uh, the form to sign up for it, was was that reviewed by legal? Which form are you the talking snow about? Snow removal client intake form. Actually, that form is not a form that is um, something that the applicant will be filling out. It's a guide for our staff just to ask some of those questions. Um, we're anticipating that the, that the residents that will be contacting us are homebound residents, and we want to make sure that, that they're eligible, that we make sure we find out if they're eligible for other programs. So that, that um, application is confidential. It's, it's more of an intake for our staff than an actual form that the um, applicant will fill out. The applicant fills out another form that's there that just talks about if they're over 65 um, and whether their, their income guidelines are, are acceptable. Those were the, that would be the form that the um, senior would fill out as well as the liability waiver talking about the limits of the program. Okay, I didn't, maybe I didn't see that. I 
I know it's a lot of information on that form. It just seems like form. Uh, you're going to overwhelm the people that we're yeah, trying to help. Yeah, it's really a guide for questions It's because it's going to be a home visit, so we will just be talking with people, and these are some of the questions that we'll just... Um, yeah, I think I'd still like Jim to, or someone to look at those forms because, to me, there's a privacy issue there. Yeah, are you talking about the first form mm -hmm. in the packet, uh, Trustee Vogel, because we did prepare the release forms. We did well, the snow removal form. client intake form. The application? Yep. Yeah, well, the, well, she it's, says it's not an application. It's not an application. It's... Sure, we'll go through that. Sure. Just to double check, because it, it seems like you're ask, we're asking for a lot of information that could be private. Um, the less, the less, the better to me. Um, simply sign up, verify the, the you know, that they're, they're uh, eligible for it. And uh, like I said, it sounds like a good idea. Trustee Lang. Thank you. Yeah, really good program. Um, what's your feeling on number of participants and then also, probably more importantly, number of volunteers? It, it's really hard to gauge at this point. Every year we get phone calls um, requesting information and for the past several years we haven't had um, anyone even call us saying they were interested in volunteering, but we've also not recruited. We've also not been out actively asking, um, going to the schools and things like that, which is the plan now. Um, but I, I do anticipate we will definitely have residents who will be interested in this program. Um, so we really have to work hard on recruiting volunteers. Trustee Hang. Thank you. Um, a lot of work went into this, and I know you've been working on it for a number of years. But I, too, uh, agree with uh, uh, Trustee Vogel. Uh, you have a one-page application to sign up for it, and you've got an eight-page uh, documentation and gathering of information. And that information could be very helpful on other things. But uh, I, I did, please be careful with this, because I want to make sure that all of the residents that do qualify and do need this assistance are going to not use this for a prerequisite to signing up for this uh, because uh, I would be very much intimidated by this and I know that some of the other seniors would also be intimidated by it. So use some extra caution. But there is some good information in there if you need to use it. Yeah. Okay. Trustee Brady. Thank you. Sure it is. I'll, I'll climb on that wagon too. It's a very good idea. It's probably been a couple times in my life for a period of time when I needed help, you know, because my wife couldn't handle a snowblower. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I, I, uh, I worked in an industry where, uh, uh, you know, injuries and, and, and liabilities was, was a huge issue. And, 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 you know, all the forms you have are, are good, uh, and these releases are all fine and dandies. But uh, this, uh, all these that I've gone through in my life, the whole harmless, the additional insured, the releases of, of, uh, of responsibility and all that, I mean a hill of beans because if somebody gets hurt, they're going to sue everybody. And I just want to ask our manager or uh, attorney, what the village would this be come under, be covered under our insurance if one of these people that, that we asked to volunteer go out there and get hurt? The the waiver forms. It's our position that these waiver forms would cover us and protect us from liability. They are volunteers. Let's keep in mind we're we're not demanding, we're we're giving people an opportunity to volunteer. They're not employees of the village, so there's no workers' compensation issue involved. Uh, they are not agents of the village. They are truly in volunteers uh, who are signing up with full knowledge that if an injury were to occur during the snow plowing or snow shoveling, I guess, uh, that that would be that would be on their they'd be on their own with that. If somebody falls, serious damage, a, a bad back, you can't work the rest of their life. The village is winning. It's not going to we, be we, mentioned. We, in we that feel lawsuit, like these, right? will, these will protect. The, the waiver forms will protect us. Be the first time I've ever seen and, it. <laughs> and, and if we are sued, we've got insurance. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's, so either way, cover, we've got belt and suspenders. I just want to make sure we're yes. covered. That's all. Thank you. That's it. Trustee Kruger. Sherry, I think this is a great program. I'm all for people that are going to volunteer and help elderly people shovel. I do it all the time in the winter just because I know someone who doesn't get out there to do it, so I just do it. Um, in the spirit of a successful marketing for volunteers, do you think that the opportunity for like a, a volunteer to be assigned to an address and then that's their address to do all the time? That would be the goal. That would be the goal? That would be the goal. So it's, it's really creating a relationship. It will be, this will be who you shovel for 
every time it snows. Right. I wouldn't want to have a, a senior uh, be concerned about a stranger coming right. every single time. So yeah. that was my only concern. I wish mm -hmm. you luck. Thank you. Trustee here. Right. Oh, go ahead, Bob. No, I was just going to say <clears throat> I concur with my colleagues on the board. Excellent program. And the questions that I had were already asked and answered. Thank you. Okay. Trustee Brady. You know, and there's enough, there's enough agencies in this community, churches, synagogues, uh, temples and that there, or in their Sunday bulletins or wherever they have, you know, they can, they can say if anybody needs help, you know, call this number and, and, and you know, put it on the bulletin boards in the, in the grocery stores. Mm -hmm. well, I, would, I would probably rather we did that more than, than advertising in the paper, Staffing. call the Village of Wheeling if you want to volunteer to shovel snow. Uh, probably be a little less involvement in, a, in our liability end of it. I think you, people will find it soon enough. We have no plans of putting it in the newspaper. We plan on putting it in the village newsletter, Good. in in local venues yeah. that way. Perfect. Thank mm -hmm. you. Sure, I think this is great. Uh, just one comment on this client intake. I'd like you to separate the snow removal client intake. I think if there's a need when you do go out there and do your interviews with the, with the folks, you're going to know they're going to need some help. I think your professionals there in your office are going to know some agencies out there to maybe help them beyond just removing the snow and in a volunteer way of maybe asking these questions that they volunteer so you can gather that information you know try to just keep it right simple. all the answers to yeah. any of these questions are voluntary right. they, they, they will not exclude anyone if they choose not to answer those questions mm -hmm. they're really a guide for us to ask certain right. things to kind of get some information get a feel of things that sometimes don't always come well, out you know better than anybody I mean people are Embarrassed or you know, self-conscious of there's oh definitely like definitely just want to be sensitive to it. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, my hat goes off to the senior commission for thinking out of the box a little bit. This is great on behalf of myself and the board. Thank you for that. And I believe the consensus across the board is go ahead with it. Good luck with it, and Thank let you. it keep us abreast of how it's going. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thirteen B. Um, ordinance adapting an addendum to the mutual aid box alarm system. Intergovernmental agreement. Thank you. Chief McIsaac. Thank you very much. In 1973, when the mutual aid box alarm system was created here in the northwest suburbs, it was intended to be a regional uh, process for handling mutual aid requests between various fire departments. Uh, since 1973, it's now grown to encompass four states uh, and literally hundreds and hundreds of fire departments. Back when this was created, the idea was that it was regionally based and that the need for reimbursement or reimbursable type issues was far and in between and each municipality would bear their own costs. Uh, now that this includes four states and the ability for interstate mutual aid response, uh, we get into the realm of federal reimbursement and potential state reimbursement and as a result of that, the mutual aid agreement that was entered into by all the fire departments in those four states uh, is being amended in order to allow where feasible and practical reimbursement to be obtained and to not be in conflict with the intergovern previous intergovernmental agreement. What's before you tonight is an amendment to that agreement allowing that to happen um, and I'm recommending approval. Thank you Chief. Questions from the board? Entertain a motion? So moved. Motion by Trustee Vogel, second by? Second. Brady? Roll call. Trustee here? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Pang? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. President Argyris? Yes, thank you. 13C. Uh, resolution approving the final plan of, of Northgate Crossing Subdivision 100 and 250 Northgate Parkway, docket number PC 14-4. Thank you. Director Janik. Thank you. This is a uh, final plan subdivision for Northgate Crossings apartment development on uh, Northgate Parkway. It consists of two uh, parcels of land that the developer has purchased and is requesting uh, final plan approval. Questions from the board? Just one. Trustee Lane. The Mark, did uh, did they have plans? I, I didn't see it in the in this uh, packet, but did they have plans for that little triangle that's off of Northgate across the street? I know it's it's in the boundaries. Correct. Uh, there, there are no plans uh, that I know of to for development of that, of that small triangle piece. Are they going to maintain it better than it is now? It's really not all that maintained. I don't believe. Um, they will be maintaining it. 
Um, if, it's, if it's not being maintained correctly, I'll take a look at it again, but they will be maintaining it. It's their property. Okay. Thank you. Trustee Kruger. Yes, Mark, can you explain the condition? Uh, hold on one second. Uh, There's one. I can read it to you. There's one. I just didn't understand it myself, that the plat is modified oh. as required by the village engineer prior to printing on Mylar. Uh, there, there was some uh, some slight change that the village engineer wanted them to change on the plat. I think it was uh, mostly a uh, verbiage that was on the plat that was incorrect. Okay. It was nothing substantial to the, the drawing itself or the property lines, that sort of thing. Okay, thank you. And I guess I got one question to the attorney, or Mallory, maybe, because you were at the plan committee. There seemed to be a question regarding should it have been two motions or one motion based on the Marlar and, and the plat. You want to explain that a little bit? Did we follow protocol? I just want to make sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, at the, uh, I believe that they they were concerned about the, the passage of that motion uh, with the condition so that it could be signed because it's going to be printed on the Mylar afterwards. But it, how they adopted the, the or passed or recommended the motion was sufficient. It was okay. Any other questions from the board? Can a motion with the condition? So moved. Second. Okay. Motion by Trustee Vogel. Second by Trustee Hine. Roll call. Trustee here? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lane? Yes. President Argeris? Yes, thank you. Uh, 13D. Ordinance amending Title 19 zoning of the Willing Municipal Code. Thank you. Director Janet. Thank you. Um, the staff is, rec is uh, requesting that the board consider and approve all, um, changes to the zoning code. Uh, plan Commission um, uh, duly um, reviewed, uh, discussed these changes, and they're being brought to you with their approval. Uh, there are basically four different um, changes to the code. I can go through them. Relatively minor. Uh, there's a change in the front yard paving amount. There's a um, uh, th there's discussion at the Plan Commission relative to um, materials on, on structures and when those materials are, are to be shown uh, to the board and the planning commission. Um, this particular one that's being requested tonight is just a for labeling of the materials. It's not the material amount itself. They're still uh, considering that. Um, fences, um, there's, a re there's a request um, to change the fence height in the front yard to four feet instead of three feet, unless there's a, uh, a problem with um, visual, um, a visual aspect on a corner. And then there's a public uh, hearing sign deposits request to uh, reduce our requirements so that the, uh, there aren't any checks provided whenever there's a, a sign being put up by a petitioner. Thank you. Questions? Trustee Brady? I'm still a little unclear on the uh, thing I was reading in here about fences versus uh, screening. Uh, fences, when they're used as, as fences along a, around a piece of property, uh, have to conform to our, our normal codes of six foot high. But if you want to, if it's between, let's say, a, a subdivision and a street, it can only be eight feet high. What, what, whatever happened with barriers between types of zoning? Do we have them anymore? This, well, this, uh, this requ request is for the front yard. It's typically in single family districts. Currently, we only allow a three foot high fence or shrub line. And what this change would allow would be a four foot high fence or shrub line in the front yard. It it's not on the side or the rear, strictly in the front yard. This is only for R1, R2, R3, then, right? Or, or, no, it, it could be for other other districts, but generally speaking, it's it's um, used in the residential districts. For instance, if somebody wants to put up a fence to keep their dog in, three foot high is relatively low, and so is a three foot high you know shrub line. This is suggesting that it be raised one foot to four feet instead of three. Okay, so if if somebody had a well, let's say along 83 in, in the several spots there where, where the side yard is actually up against the street. Uh, and I know it's, it's bad in several spots because it is along 83 and hard to see up the street. But there's some areas where, you know, a, a, an actual berm of, and, and some, some barriers planting would be better off than a fence. And I, just, I'm just, I, I was a little confused what is allowed and what isn't allowed as far as privacy goes, you know. Well, if, if, the, if a plan came in and, and they requested a, a higher barrier for whatever reason for privacy, um, th that would be part of the part of the plan review. This would not say that you absolutely cannot have a higher um, fence or screening area, but it suggests that in a normal course of business on a normal property, 
four feet would be allowed now instead of three. Okay, and, and this doesn't affect uh, 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 landscape screening and barriers in between the different zones, zoning? No, it does not. Okay, good, thank you. Anybody else? Motion okay. approved. Motion by Trustee Brady. Second. Second by Trustee Lang. Roll call with the conditions. Trustee here? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. President Argyris? Yes, thank you. 13E. Resolution approving recertification for the community rating system. Thank you. Good evening, President Argyris. How are trustees. you? Uh, the village has been a participant in the National Flood Insurance Program Community Rating System since 1990. The Community Rating System Program was created by FEMA to provide incentive for communities to implement flood plain regulations to reduce flood losses. As of May 2013, the village rating is a Class 6, as has already been discussed a little bit. The Class 6 rating provides a 20% premium discount for properties in the Special Flood Hazard Area. As, par as a participant in the community rating system program, the village is required to complete an annual recertification stating we are implementing all of the activities to maintain our class six rating. Before you tonight is the annual request for recertification to the CRS program. And if you have any questions, that's what I'm here for. Thank you, John. Questions from the board? Trustee just, Lang? Just one comment. John, will we ever be Better than the, the class six. I mean, is there is is there a big jump now to get to five? The, for instance, as you go down in class from a, a six to a five to a four to whatever, it it, it would require a significant uh, amount of staff time to to make that next jump. There's no question about that. The activities they just become more extensive, and there's more time involved, and uh, it's possible, but. Uh, if you, I should have grabbed the numbers for you. There are not, if you go online and just Google it for the state of Illinois, you'll see that there are very few class sixes in the state. And when you start talking four, five, and four, there are, there are not any, I don't believe. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay, thank you. Thanks. I just want to say that, uh, you know, for many years we were a class eight. And class eight was a 10% discount to the premium owners. It's with the hard work of staff during the last probably 10 years, 12 years, we've actually moved down two classes, which is a testament to everything that we're trying to do here, the vision that we have here regarding stormwater management and handling our flooding issues. But for many years, it was dormant. There was no change. There were probably violations out there in the past that we needed to get fixed. I know recently we had to do stuff that was from years ago and fix. And I think FEMA has recognized that. And that's uh, a testament to what staff and John and Mark and John, uh, what we're trying to do here. We are on top of it. A 20% discount is huge, especially with the Billy Waters Act out there floated around and uh, making life miserable for those existing policyholders, where as much as three to 400% increase in coverage just based on we're paying for everybody else. I brought this up at the Northwest Municipal Conference. There is basically a moratorium on some of this stuff right now on increasing, but they've made it harder to get flood insurance. Not because of anything we're doing, just because they're looking for $24, million, $24 billion deficit in, in the program nationwide. So let's continue to do what we're doing and maintain and respect what we're doing here. And uh, again, kudos to staff for, because I remember 10 years ago having this conversation and, uh, and we became more proactive with it. You know, the Buffalo Creek stabilization, the diversionary channel, all these programs that we're doing and they're creating comp storage, working out partnerships with the park district. It's so important and it comes back and everybody benefits from it. So with that, I entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Motion by Trustee Brady, second by Trustee, I'm sorry, Lang, and uh, second by Trustee Vogel. Trustee here? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. President Juris? Yes, thank you. 13F. 13F, resolution ratifying the village manager's approval of a permit for the Knights of Columbus to conduct a tag day event on September 19th and 20th, 2014. Thank you. Manager's Fundals. Thank you. Due to timing issues, uh, this application came in. I approved it uh, and just am asking for the board to ratify it. The only caveat for this evening is uh, if any of our board members are actually on the board uh, for the Knights of Columbus, I ask that you abstain from thank voting. Thank you. Trustee Brady? Abstain. Trustee Hare? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Abstain. Entertain a motion. So moved. 
Second. Trustee Hines, second by Trustee Kruger. I went out of order Hi. a little bit, but that's Kruger. okay. That's okay. 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 Roll call. Trustee here. I have to Who's left? <laughs> are you on the He's are upstairs. You, are you on no, the I'm not on the board. I, you don't have to. I can vote. You can I vote. I thought you were on the board. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. Why not? I don't know. <laughs> ask them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They didn't want. Dave, recruit them. If you're not Trustee here, you're a yes. Yeah, am I? Am I getting Trust back. Getting back to business. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Brady. Epstein. Trustee Kruger. Yes. Trustee Hine. Yes. Trustee Vogel. Abstain. Trustee Lang. Yes. Prisoner Juris. I say no. What happens instead? I'll say yes. <laughs> no. It's okay. We have four. We have your money back. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, 13 G. Is in the bank. 13 H. H. I'm sorry, there is no G. Okay. 13H. Resolution regarding notice of proposed rulemaking proceedings, hazardous materials, enhanced tank car standards, and operational controls for high hazard flammable trains before the pipelines and hazardous materials safety administration in docket number PHMSA 2012-0082 HM251. Thanks, Chief McIsaac. Thank you. Uh, over the last six years, there's been a number of train derailments uh, in North America that have resulted in uh, spectacular incidents involving particularly crude oil. Uh, a regional group here in the northwest suburbs formed a group called TRAC to uh, address this issue a number of years ago, particularly with the uh, Canadian National Railroad. Um, in the meantime, the railroad industry has proceeded with a uh, number of hearings before the feds to discuss uh, how to address avoiding the release of hazardous materials during train derailments. And uh, in particular, they're referring to what's known as a, uh, a, mo a DOT model 11, 111 tank car. Uh, the, the movement of foot right now is to increase the uh, thickness of the steel associated with these tank cars, insulating material, uh, improving the coupling systems associated with these units and rollover protection on valve assemblies. Um, this has been before the federal government for hearing, like I said, for the last several years. The railroad industry has reached a tentative agreement with the federal government on some of the provisions originally requested by TRAC. Um, and I've recommended they apply to new rail tank cars going forward involving certain commodities. Um, that is not completely to the desires of TRAC, and many of those members of TRAC are members of the Northwest Municipal Conference. And so this has been a topic that has been looked upon through the entire Northwest Municipal Conference as a means of improving railway safety through all the communities in the Northwest suburbs. And it is before you tonight a, uh, a resolution uh, supporting the efforts of TRAC and the Northwest Municipal Conference in advocating for improved railroad safety. Thanks, Chief. Any questions from anybody? So moved. Motion by Trustee here. Second. Second, Second by Trustee Lang. Roll call. Trustee here. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Kruger. Yes. Trustee Hine. Yes. Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Lang. Yes. Prisoner Juris. Yes. I just make a quick comment that uh, Mayor Karen uh, Darch from Barrington has really pioneered and, and gone, even though it's been in the system for a lot of years, she's really making a lot of noise and, and gotten a lot of people's ear on this. So kudos to her for all her hard work and trying to pioneer to get something done here. And I thank you for the uh, approval on that. Okay, official communication. Let's start with Trustee Kruger. I uh, thank you. Um, I attended the uh, 47th annual Wheeling, actually Chicagoland Marching Band Festival held at the high school on Saturday night. It was truly outstanding and it was great to hear commentary from people sitting in the stands about how well run it was and it was on time. Um, the weather held out and a lot of people really liked the Wheeling High School Marching Band. They were, they really rocked it. So that was uh, my, my weekend activity and I'm looking forward to Taste of the Town. So I hope to help uh, promote that on my Facebook page for you guys. That's it. Thank you. Trustee Brady? None tonight. Thank you. Trustee here? I'm all talked out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Hang? Yeah, thing this evening. <laughs> Trustee Vogel? I've got quite a 
few things to talk about this evening, as long as you guys all got nothing else to do. <laughs> what did Green Bay do yesterday? After? I didn't check the news. They got, they, they're, they're still smoking. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, just one thing. A, a thank you to all of the uh, residents of the village that supported the uh, Knights of Columbus Tag Day. Turned out great. Uh, we had a record year, and uh, it was fantastic that uh, people supported it the way, they, the way they did. So thank you. Sure. And good luck to yeah. America's team. Trustee Lang. <laughs> I just, just want to mention that the, uh, I thought some of the conferences and, um, and uh, discussions from the manager conference were very good and very on, on uh, target for some future uh, plans with the village. And uh, it looked like it was a really good conference. And based on some of the reports on it, it, it looked like you guys did some good intel. It was. Thank you. So, thank you. Clerk Simpson. I have three. I have the Wheeling Historical Society presents the Stylins 2014 Pictorial Trip Through China. It will be held this Wednesday at 6.30 at the Old Church at Chamber Park, 251 North Wolf Road. It starts at 6.30 and um, will walk with us along the Great Walls and discover the mysteries of the Terracotta Warriors. If you need further information, please call Joan at 847-650-0144. Will there be refreshments? There's always refreshments. Oh, okay, just check. And they're free. Okay. Okay. And this coming Saturday, the WCPAA fundraising and fall decluttering will have the savers here in at the Village Hall uh, Saturday, September 27th from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. The savers truck will be in front of City Hall, and it'll be, if they'll get 20 cents a pound for all your clothing. You bring your clothing over. Savers will weigh it, and this, the organization, the Police Academy Association, will get 20 cents for every pound that is donated. So that's a really good cause. They're hoping to collect around $1,000. So bring all your old clothes and stuff, clean your closet up. Clothing only? Pardon? Clothing only? It's clothing only right now. Yeah, it just says clothing on there. Okay, because, all right. If they, if they get 400 bags, they can collect $1,000. That's right here at the parking lot? Right here in the parking lot. Okay. And then coming up, I don't have all the information on it, but I'll give you what I have. Um, the second annual Luau presented by the Police Academy Alumni Association will be held on Saturday, October 25th. Uh, dinner's at 5, and the show is at 8. It's $20 for adults, $10 for children between the ages of 10 and 6. Children under 5 are free. I don't have the tickets yet, but we will be selling the tickets here also. So I'll have more information at our next meeting. Thank you. Manager Fundles. Thank you. One thing this evening. Uh, there's been a request for um, a procedure by which the board can recognize local businesses that make improvements physical improvements to their buildings uh, without the use of TIF funds or our facade grant improvement program. So those businesses that have made, made and taken the initiative uh, to do uh, significant improvements, uh, a means by which we can recognize them through um, bringing them in, on providing them with a plaque, just basically recognizing their efforts for improving their site. Um, we can set this up just writing a very simple policy just so that we have something on record, something to work off of. I'm happy to put that together for the board's approval. Just wanted to make sure that before I did that everyone agreed that this was a, a worthwhile endeavor and I'd be happy to answer any questions and begin the process of putting that in place. Any questions? Thank Trustee Brady? That is a great idea. And if we're going to uh, give them something, let's give them something meaningful, like a really nice plaque that they can hang in a prominent place, you know, congratulating Absolutely. them on their efforts. Thank you. Great. Everybody's okay with that? Yep. Good. Me too. Mm -hmm. uh, just a couple things real quick. Uh, this uh, Thursday, as I announced earlier, uh, with the Northwest Water, Northwest Water, Northwest Municipal Conference, <laughs> Uh, we have our first meeting as chair of the Transportation Committee. Also, Trustee Hines has been asked to sit on that uh, panel as well. So we're hoping to bring some things back to uh, the board and uh, keep you abreast of what's going on with the Northwest Municipal Conference. God, why am I saying that, huh? And 
The Bears are winning right now, seven to nothing. In case Trustee Vogel wanted to know, and uh, that's it for now. And I entertain a motion to approve the bills for August 21st we'll through this. September 17, 2014. Trustee Vogel, do you make that motion? I'm sorry, yes, I will. Okay, thank you. Second by. Second. Trustee Kruger, roll call. Trustee here. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Kruger. Yes. Trustee Hine. Yes. Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Lang. Yes. Prisoner Juris. Yes. We do have executive session this evening for pending probable and or imminent litigation. I entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Motion by Trustee here. Second by Trustee Kruger. Roll call, please. Trustee here. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Kruger. Yes. Trustee Hine. Yes. Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Lang. Yes. Prisoner Juris. Yes. We'll go into executive session immediately. Thank you. Hey, what's the uh, oh. Oh. No cigarettes?